All right, all right. I think we, I think we back. Finally. You can hear me? Yeah, I can see you. I hear you. That's good. That's good. That's good. Shout out to the real. Let's get it going. Sorry for holding you up. I don't know whether my headphones, because I was outside. I was in the pool and shit, so I wanted to hear you. So I don't know if it was the headphones or what, but uh, I guess that was the problem. Okay. So, so how now you doing? We're good. we're good now. How you doing? I'm Shout great. out to the real. Christian Monroe, what's going on? I'm good. Good. Chilling. Just staying cool. How are you? I'm fine. So... We're going to start this off. We started off rough. So, you're from Baltimore, right? Yes. Right, from Baltimore. And um, tell us about growing up in Baltimore. What do you want to know? Everything. No, you're going to give me, oh, you put me to the test here. You was, you're, you're a Virgo, right? Yes. So, you're a very complicated woman. No, not at all. Very organized and analytical. Very analytical. Absolutely. Would you call yourself a foot? Would you call yourself a flirt? A what? A flirt. Are you flirtatious? I, I could be flirty, but it's hard finding someone I want to flirt with. So you mean to tell me there's no interesting guy in Chrissy's life? Not right now. I'm single as a dollar bill. That is very, that is good information to know. That is very good information to know. So how old are you, by the way? 48. You're 48, and you but look you know very, what? very... Didn't you learn not to ask a woman her age, just on a side note? Didn't anyone ever tell you that that's very um, impolite? I don't mind it... because I'm proud of my age, but most women would be offended. I'm not. Yeah, I figured you wouldn't be because you're very, very beautiful. And you know what? Because we started so rough with everything messing up, I'm just reading off the notes right here. So I just see you, seeing your birthday up here. I know you're a Virgo. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I got plenty of baby mothers as Virgo, so that was very interesting. But how many baby mothers do you have? Oh, man, this is not my interview. It's no, not I my know, interview. You, I'm intrigued because you said I have plenty of baby mothers that are Virgos. Like, you have a collection of baby mothers. <laughs> how many baby mothers do you have? Yeah, I, I got a collection. I, mean, I got about three. Got you three. have about three. So you have three. Three. Two, three. Okay, anyway. You can I, was married before, I was married before. I just call them baby mothers. Okay. I got, I got multiple kids, multiple households. Um, you know what I'm saying? You, know, you want to hear about it? No. I mean, I was married before. My kids are older me. now. Maybe I'll interview you one day and we can hear that because that is very interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. So you're a pimp and you don't like that word. And why you don't like that word? Well, we're not going to get into that. So if you're reading off my history from Google from... 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, then we don't need to get into that. We can end the interview right now. Why are we in the interview? Because if that's what you want to discuss. No, I'm discussing everything. The, I'm the discussing things everything. that I did. Yeah, I have, I have no shame about my past, but if that's the first thing you want to bring up instead of what I'm doing now in the present time, like people no, like we're, to dig up actually, dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like people love to dig up the negative. So you just started out by throwing that right at me, like the, the hurry up, let me just bring that shit right up, like. Well, well, that's not really what happened. You know that's what I'm exactly what happened. I'm starting from your younger years. If you grew up in Baltimore as a teen, you mm -hmm. started out how? How did you grow up in Baltimore? You grew up on the streets. Said you was homeless. So I'm trying to bring all that. So together. you're reading. What you read my Wikipedia? You went on Google. I so. read everything. I listened to your okay. interviews. So that does that I watched make your true? interviews. But does huh? that make everything true? No, because it it's doesn't. On the internet. It doesn't make it true, and that's what I want to know. That's why I'm talking to you. Okay, but you're, like I'm trying, you're, I'm not you're trying to stating hurt you. statements at me instead of asking me the question. You're you're stating statements that you read off of Google, which mm. is not a reliable source. Some of it is true. Yes, I am from Baltimore. Mm. Yes, right. I was in the adult entertainment industry. But All right, you're, just, so you're just throwing these facts that you read about me and wrote down on a piece of paper, apparently, at me, and I'm not, I'm not with it. I've done thousands, well, not thousands, hundreds of interviews, so I'm not feeling comfortable with how you're coming at me, to be honest. Well, I didn't come at you nowhere. I'm just bringing up things that I listen to. I listen to your interviews. I've been listening to your interviews all day, actually. Okay. So I'm hearing things that you said. I'm okay. bringing it up, and I'm bringing this up to speed. We got lost talking about me and being highly dysfunctional in multiple households. So I don't have a problem talking about me, so why you don't have a problem talking about you? 
because this is my interview and I can choose to answer what I want and not answer what I want. All right. So, so what would, what would you want to talk about? You don't want to talk about your life. You want to bring it up to speed, bring my no. viewers up to speed. You're so how would you like me to handle that? You can ask me whatever you want. It just doesn't mean that I have to answer them. You can throw as many questions at me as you like, but please be mindful of how you're asking the questions. Right. Not just throwing these facts at me that you think are 100% true because you read them on Google. Ask mm. me, is this true? I read this about you, Chrissy. Can you clarify this? Now mm. that I feel comfortable with. Don't mm. just throw some shit at me and think I'm going to just respond. I Come on. Mm. <laughs> come on. All right, well, the things I'm throwing at you is things you spoke about. So none of this stuff is, is like... Things you haven't spoke about. None of this is new. Okay, so, but it's it's not even the question. It's how you're asking. You understand? It's not how, what you're saying. It's how you're saying it. You're from Baltimore, right? That's you had a an fact. escort agency, right? That is, I'm from Baltimore is a fact. Yes, I used to own escort agencies. All right. And we'll start from the beginning. Okay. So you're from the streets. You was a hustler, so to say, right? If that's what you want to call it. All right. So what would you call it? A young entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. A young entrepreneur. So talk about it. So tell me about your experiences growing up as a young, because you, you talked about your experience of getting on Love and Hip Hop and why you wanted to get on Hip Hop because you was in already, your life was so much filled with so many different people in the industry, being a boyfriend of, uh, being a girlfriend of little C's and things of like that. So that's what I want to talk about. I'm bringing everybody up to speed. Okay, but you're mixing, like, you're mixing a lot of shit into the pot that is like 10, 15, 20 years apart. So can we mm. get some order and sequence into this interview? What is, can I ask you one more question? That's really what, is, what is your um, What is your main objective with interviewing me today? Like, what, what do you hope to accomplish by conducting this interview with me today? An interview with you today is a conversation. And the conversation is me and you is having in a highly Dutch functional style. We're not here to to um, hurt uh, uh, put anybody down. We talk. We talk about your life. We talk about it. We laugh about it. We joke about it. And we here okay, to um, hear about what you got going on today. I've not done I've done plenty of interviews, and I ask questions. You talk about it. I don't put nobody on the spot. And I'm saying I'm all for a good time. So I've met you a few times. So for me to talk about the things that that's already out there. And to bring my viewers up to speed, because this is an interview on my platform. So if you talked about it on another platform, why wouldn't you talk about it here? When have you heard me talk about um, the escort business on other platforms? I've been on Fox. I've been on Sirius XM. And any time, even Vlad TV, mm -hmm. any time that that subject has been brought up, I said, I don't care to discuss it. That is part of my past. And I'm not trying mm -hmm. to condone it to the young ladies or men that are listening. You did. You so did say that. You should have heard that if you listened you to all that. of my interviews. You so I don't that. know why but, that but, was the first thing you blurted out of your mouth. And yes, I have met you in person and you were very polite. So I'm you know, always polite. But the way you're coming at me today is completely a different person. It's like you're trying to get some kind of scandal for, for your There's listeners. There's no scandal. To... There's no scandal, ma'am. I've done countless interviews. So why would I want a scandal now? I can't what's tell scandal? because you're what's scandal. What scandal? You're bringing I don't, up. I don't know no you're scandal. bringing up the negativity from my past. That's like saying if you you interview a famous rapper who sold. I have clothes, a past. Instead of I have asking a past. them about their music I have a and past. what projects are you working up on? Oh, you used to sell crack, didn't you, in the '90s? This is how you're at me. Instead of saying we're bringing up, we're what starting from the beginning. Lately? What are you working on now in 2021? Not 25 fucking years ago. All right, listen, real quick. This stuff, this this is about positive. It's about negative to positive on this show. I have a past. I am an inmate. I came home from prison. I'm trying to change my life. So it's all about negative to positive on this show. If you paid attention, you did your research. How you dysfunction was about. Hold up, I, I it's cool. You don't have to. So if you're talking about, hold up. If you're talking about something, we're talking about your life, and we're going to highlight where you came from and where you went. That's what I do here because that's what my life is about. Where I started at and where I'm going. The things I've accomplished and things I'm going to continue to accomplish. Now, for you talking about negativity, 
then that's you seeing yourself as negative. Because I'm just saying, you're an older woman, we're talking, you've been through the game, you did this, you did that, you're very beautiful. I have nothing to say negative about you. I'm a big fan, so why would I come on here and say anything? You Everyone's started off late. The same thing. I'm why trying to get you to, you're from the streets of Baltimore. Like, it's the, truth. the streets why of Baltimore are rough. Like this? The streets Everyone's of Baltimore are rough, like, right? Well, why are you trying to argue with someone you want an interview with? Like, why are you trying to argue? I, this is the first of this. This is this is fun. I, this is this is scandalous. <laughs> how, do, how do we handle this? How do we handle? Because I didn't say nothing but to you. But did you grow up on the streets, border? You was a pimp. You don't like the word. Why you don't like the word? What? Where you were? How? How was you in the industry? We're talking about the things you accomplished. I things was you've a done. stripper. I was a stripper. I sold drugs. I mean, you might as well add that into the pot too. When I yeah, was let's there. add it. Let's add it. That's what there's, I'm here to talk about. No shame in my game. So if all right, then let's get to it then. But ask me. Hey, I heard you had a um, not so easy past. Would you mind discussing that? And to how you went from that to where you are now. You don't just say, I heard you was a pimp. Ah. You grew up on the streets of Baltimore. You worked as a pimp, escort agency. You don't like the word pimp. I gave you a time to explain yourself. You don't like the pimp, I don't need word to pimp. And why? I something from 30, 20, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, why? you got to bring them up the speed. today? I've Everything done a lot of things in here. my life. I've owned clothes. Because I'm stores. curious about your life myself. I've had a plastic surgery business. What? Why are you All right. talking so about some of the you you got Dr. from my past? Saying, Dr. Bill? My domestic violence foundation. But you're going to talk about all of that. We got to get to that, though, Chrissy. 30 Christy. years ago. Chrissy, we got to get to that. Honey, we got to get to that. You got to let me get to that. You got to let me do what I'm doing. Thank you. If you don't let me do what I'm doing for the first exactly. five minutes. You just come. You argue with me. And I understand. You, I already know you was in the S. I already know you was. You worked on all of That's these That's been places. on television. That's been on TV. I put that out there, so it's not a secret. But we already know like all of these things. I'm trying to talk about them. We the got to talk about one thing at a time. Right now, that I'm no longer involved in for over a decade. I know more. all this, Christy. You're no longer involved in. We know about you working in the doctor's office. We know about your work with people's culture in their bodies. I want to talk about all that. We know about serving looks. I want to get to all of that. I'm here as a fan, and I'm also here to do a job. So I got to document the, the street pass because I'm from the streets. I'm intrigued by that because that's where you're from. I'm from the streets. I'm well, not here to be it. disrespectful. It's all, it's all going to be out of my book, which is being published by Leeds Press. Should be out by September 15th, hopefully. I have it three quarters of the way done. And it will tell you all the dirt from my past and where I'm mm. going to be paid for the, for the dirt. Mm. I'm not talking about all that scandal for free on your show. Okay, oh. if people want to hear about that part of my life, they can buy my fucking book. Oh. It will be available on Amazon Prime, just like my show will be. Thank you. All right, well, that's cool. I, I don't mind that. If you don't want to talk about stuff, you can tell me that. I'm not here to talk about nothing you don't want to talk about, man. So talk about serving Wait, lips, man. 15 minutes fight. later, now it's, we don't got to talk about it. I mean, it's You could have said that, though, because you argue with me. Actually, you're telling me how I, I brought something up with you, and I'm asking you about your past. You're and not you're asking a, me. You threw a fact and then thought I was just going to go into detail about it. I don't I'm think like nothing. I'm out of here with the bullshit. I don't think nothing. And nothing about me is bullshit. It's I'm all just in asking my you a book. question. It will all be in my book for twenty four. Well, I can't wait to read your book. I can't I wait to read your book. Why wouldn't I buy it? I bought your stuff. You love reading book. about me on the internet. You can get reading it on Kindle. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking to you now. I'm talking no, I'm to you now. I'm not going to leave, everyone. I'm not. I'm not going to let this this guy try to intimidate me into leaving. We're not ending the interview. There's nothing from my past I am ashamed of. Everything that I have done has made me into the woman I am today. Do I need to sit and go but that's over what every we're detail? Doing here. Because someone thinks that's going to be exciting for his interview, for his viewers? No, I do not. So next question, please. You was on TV at an early age, right? Okay. Before Love and Hip Hop, right? Okay. Is that a question? Okay, you're, you're making a statement once again, and then you're asking me I said, was a question. You? <laughs> Can you ask it in a question? Was you on a show before Love and Hip Hop? <laughs> That's what I just asked you. I've been in, I did a lot of work growing up in Baltimore. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. So what, what work did you do, Chrissy? 
I was on um, a Baltimore City cable soap opera for a summer, which for me at the time was very big. I was in my early 20s. And I will actually be showing footage from them, um, from that show, next month on an interview I did with Kelly Hill, who was one of my acting coaches back then in um, Baltimore. Mm. So that was that. And we filmed it at Monique's Comedy Club. Um, the comedian Monique, as you may know, she's also from Baltimore. So, you know, I always tried to network and get on where I could. I did a lot of extra parts in anything that was filmed in Baltimore and D.C. Homicide, Life on the Streets was a big show. Um, it's kind of like a, what is that show they have here with Ice-T? The crime show, like an NCIS. Mm -hmm. um, I did something for Michael Moore, who did Fahrenheit 911. I think that episode is on YouTube called The mm. Awful Truth. So bottom line, I did a lot of extra work, um, but you know, they call Baltimore small some more. So I pretty much took advantage of every opportunity that I possibly, you know, I could in the chosen field that I wanted to be in, which was not pimping, okay, mm. which is acting and entertainment theater. Mm. But I realized that the window of opportunity was only so big in Baltimore. So I had to either move to New York or LA at the time to get to where I, I wanted to be, which is what happened. I moved here 20 years ago and haven't looked back. Mm. So. so so, you talk about not having, um, you know, is love a big part of your life? Is a big part of your future, being 48? And, and <laughs> how is the relationship feel right now for you? I, I'm really not dating actively. and I'm Actively at all? I mean, I go out on little dinner dates here and there, but um, I think I'm Beyonce. I wish. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I'm not dating right now. Um, I'm focused on my business, my new TV show, my book, my product line, and my nonprofit organization. So if I do meet someone special, then hey, that's great. But I'm not out here, um, you know, on the prowl. <laughs> I mean, of course, I meet guys all the time that are interested in me, but I'm very particular of who I spend my time with. And, um, you know, that's it. Yes. As an older so what's up woman. With finding Chrissy? As an older woman. Yes. Mm. What's up with Finding Chrissy? Finding Chrissy is a reality show. Okay. It's a reality mm. show that we just wrapped up filming. It's actually in the editing phase. It should be released late August. So Finding Chrissy is actually a reality show based on my reality after reality TV because we, we get to know a lot of people through these shows and their character. Um, we feel like we know them and then all of a sudden they're gone. Where did they go? What happened to them since they were on the show? So um, my show basically shows my real life today, the things I'm doing presently after reality TV and how being on a show of, you know, the magnitude such as Love and Hip Hop has completely changed my life. Because let's face it, when you're on a show like that, you're marked for life. People are always going to associate you with that character, with that person that they show them, saw on the show. Mm -hmm. So it can be good and it can be bad. You ask about dating. Part of my hurdles with dating are men such as yourself who want to google Chrissy and think they know so much about my life and spit facts at me at dinner that may or may not be true which makes me uncomfortable because now I feel like you have the upper hand because I can't google you and you're sitting here you basically me. judging me off of shit you read on the internet that you really never don't know you. is sure enough. But no, I'm, I'm saying I've encountered this on dates. This is why I'm very defensive about how you came at me because I've mm. actually gotten up and left restaurants because of similar shit. Ask me first. Don't just assume everything you read on the internet is true because it is not. Well, we're here to talk. We're here to talk, beautiful. So, we're not here to... Anything I say is a question. You have a right okay. to answer back. So tell me about the domestic violence program you get with this nonprofit thing and what made you get into it? Okay, so shortly after I left Love & Hip Hop, I got in love, I fell in love with a younger guy. Um, I was very vulnerable being new to this newfound fame, being on TV. I really didn't know what to expect. No one tells you 
how much your life is going to change once that first episode airs. I wasn't ready. So mm -hmm. I felt like um, I could be kind of almost reclusive because I just all of a sudden was so popular and everybody wanted to be my friend. People that didn't invite me to their baby showers now are asking me to be their fucking kid's godmother. It was mm -hmm. all fake. I had a lot of fake people approaching me, like predators, like it was predatory behavior for men and women. Everybody wanted something from me. Um, a lot of opportunists, you know, constantly coming around, you know, but I could see right through the bullshit. So I met this younger man. He seemed to be very um, normal. He didn't have social media. He never watched the love and hip hop. He didn't want to be on film. So I, I like that. I, I took that as him being genuine. But I didn't know he was an abusive uh, person. Mm -hmm. So three months into the relationship, it started with the emotional abuse. Then it, 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 it transitioned into the verbal, and then it turned into the physical. So that's a lot to discuss. It would take an hour for me to discuss each one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it ended up... 10 months later, with him almost killing me, I have permanent hearing damage in my left ear. He dislocated my left jaw. He broke my front tooth. I have veneers now. I had it fixed. Um, cracked rib, and he robbed me for over $10,000 worth of jewelry. So um, I pressed charges, and the, the district attorney here in Yonkers only gave him three months. I was pissed. So, mm. um, you know... I have a platform, thank God, I was blessed with from being on TV. I was so mad because I'm like, wait a minute, they only gave him three fucking months and this man almost killed me? Imagine all the other women and men um, who are not getting any justice whatsoever and have no voice and who have gotten it worse in these domestic situations and, and, and just violent situations, period. I need to speak up, come forward about what happened to me, um, and try to make sure this doesn't happen to the next person. Um, so thus, Sur Survive to Thrive Global, my 501c3 um, organization was born in 2016. So far, so good. Um, the page is www. No, the website is www.survivetothriveglobal.org. Sur um, and I've actually had four other women reach out to me about my ex. Um, you know, that he's beaten them up as well. Um, so, you know, people used to victim blame, victim shame. Well, why didn't you leave him? Why would you stay with somebody like that? The question should be, why is he beating on women? Okay? Because people are so quick to blame um, the, the abused, not the abuser. Um, so, you know, the laws are very antiquated with domestic violence. They go back to the 40s and 50s when domestic violence was a matter between husband and wife. These laws need to change because there are actually so many women sitting in prison um, unjustly for defending their own lives and their children's lives against their abuser. These women are not violent offenders. If a guy is coming at you with a knife, talking about I'm gonna kill you, beating your ass for the last year, and you take that knife and stab him in self-defense, mm. what would you rather do, die? He might stab your kids up, or would you rather go to prison? Most people would say, I'd rather go to prison. But there are women doing life in prison for, for, such, for such situations. Mm. They're not violent. They're not mean murderers, but they don't deserve to be there. These mm. women need to be exonerated from all their charges and, and released from prison. It's not fair. But, you know, that's a whole, that's the whole legal side. Dawn Florio is the vice president. She's my best friend. She's a criminal defense attorney of my foundation. Um, and, you know, we're looking into some of the legal ramifications. Um, but each state is different, too. Some states, they don't play that domestic violence shit. But mm. New York, unfortunately, I found they really don't care. They're, there's really no justice. The laws are in the favor of the offender. And it's, it's mm. got to stop. These guys are constantly getting out to reoffend and sometimes even kill. It's mm. got to fucking stop. So, you know, I, I wanted to use my platform for some good, not just to sell my lip glosses and all that, which we'll get into, but to do good. Um, there's, there's too many people on here. They're just talking about themselves and all this bullshit, um, trying to get clout and, you know, this and that attention. 
why not use your platform, even if you have 10,000, 15, 20,000 followers, to do some good for a cause that you really care about? And I'm, it doesn't have to be domestic violence. It could be breast cancer, but everybody can make a change. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's how that was born, because I almost lost my life to domestic violence. So. <sighs> Well, here at Holly Dysfunctional, um, we're all about giving back, and we're all about helping one another, and we're all about picking each other up. We're not here about bullying. We're not here to abuse anybody. And then you try to bully me in the fucking beginning of this <laughs> this interview. Chrissy, you cra yeah, that's crazy that you would even think that. That's crazy that you would feel that way. I mean, you come that's at me. Rah, 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 rah. That's me. Care. That's me. My skin is so thick. That's the. It's, it's whatever. I've dealt with, well, I, I, I've well, dealt you know with what? bigger entities than you. I can, uh, ooh, more, more insults. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, listen, I have never um, came at you directly. I only asked you a question. I have not made this personal in any type of way. It and is I personal. Don't plan to, I don't, I don't plan personal. to make it personal. This huh? is personal. This is a personal interview with me. This is yeah, yeah, this but is I'm not personal. personally attacking you. I'm you asked me about Chrissy. You. I'm the person that's personal yeah. as well. All right. So what's up with this plastic surgery game that you're in? You, you've done, you work with a lot of doctors. You've been around. You educate people on plastic surgery. So what do you, what do you got to say about I'm that? I'm out of that business. Hospitalized in September for a month due to a blood clot they found in the vein in my liver. It's called deep vein thrombosis. Mm. So when I was in that hospital and lost 30 pounds, I had five surgeries in five days. I was in a coma. The priest came, everything. Like, I really didn't think I was going to come home. I really reevaluated my life um, and decided that, wait a minute, I did not move here from Baltimore 20 years Baltimore. ago to be in the medical field. The plastic surgery business is something that I basically kind of fell into um, after leaving Love, Love and Hip Hop, and I was extremely good at it, and it was extremely lucrative. But I got caught up in, you know, this medical field, making these surgeons all this money, but... That wasn't the Chrissy who moved 20 years ago with a goal of being in the entertainment business. I wasn't being true to myself by being in that field. So I decided when I was in the hospital, if God willing, I come home, I'm not going back to that business. And I'm focusing on all the things that I said I was going to do all this time, bullshitting around in the medical field. Oh, I'll get to writing my book. Oh, I'll get to start my own cosmetics line. Oh, I'll do my own reality show one day. No, I realized how precious every moment is because when you have a near-death experience like I did, you don't got time to fuck around. So literally, true to my word, I got out October 13th. I started my business serving looks um, in November. I started writing my book in November. And then this past couple months, we filmed and wrapped up uh, Finding Chrissy, my own reality show, on top of everything else um, that I said I wanted to do. You know, so it was about reprioritizing my life. Everything ain't about money. Was I making more money in the surgery business? Yes. I even formed a marketing and consulting LLC, Mark Monroe Marketing LLC, and had an office on Madison Avenue, very prestigious. I had my own business. But was I happy? No. At the end of the day, I am an older woman. I'm 48. And realistically, time is a motherfucker. We don't have as much time as we think we do. Mm. I've made more progress since being out of the hospital for the approximate, what, six or seven months than I made in the last six or seven years by just focusing on me. So when you ask me about dating, Dating's not a priority. Dating, dick's going to be there. Dick is everywhere. Let's be real, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to be there. But, you know, I need to do some shit for me first and get my shit together. Then I believe God will put the right person in my path instead of me trying to go out and force something or just because he's cute and maybe mold him into what I want him to be. That's the problem. Too many people can't be alone. I can be alone. What do you mean mold? You like younger guys? I love younger men. Mm. So what's of the course. age right? What age do you like? What's, Thir what's 30, and like? 30 and over. 30 and over. 30 and over? Mm-hmm. That's nice. So what, what is it about younger men you like? Um, They're fun. They still like to go out. They still like to explore. They love to travel. Um, 
obviously most of them, I can't say all, the sex is way better. They have more stamina. Um, they're just more curious. You know what I'm saying? They're willing to um, try new things. They're more open-minded. They're fun. They want to take you out, you know, with their friends yeah. to places and stuff. Older men, it's kind of like, oh, let's just stay in. You know, you fuck once and they're snoring five minutes later. Not all men. But what, then what, what do you mean by just, older, though? How old are, how old is older? What's the oldest man you ever slept with? What, I've been I, dated, dated. Dated, dated. Come on, you know, I'm keeping it clean. I'm going to, after this, we're going to talk. Because I like what you're doing, but, you know, you got to tone it down a little bit with your guests. Okay? <laughs> It's, it's anything you say, Chrissy. Listen, anything you say, I told you, I ain't got no beef with you. Thank you. I've dated men uh, 20 to 30 years my senior. I mean, decrepit. And I'll be honest, a lot of them had money, and that was and Nicole my Smith motivation. Stuff? Excuse me? And Nicole Smith stuff? Yeah. I'm honest. If I'm dating an older man that's not a, that attractive, that really is boring, if he can make me happy in other ways like shopping paying bills making my life easier then that's a plus that that makes up for him being deficient sexually and looks wise i'm keeping it 100 as always now younger men they don't have to have the money that the older men have because usually they got the dick action the fun but i'm not really going to take them as serious as maybe settling down with someone older realistically I would like to settle down with someone around my age group when I'm ready. That's well, that right. reality. Um, because that person will probably already be established, whereas the younger man is still getting his life together. And I don't got time to be anybody's mama. So So you have never you have, you have never wanted to have kids, none of that stuff? I'm very surprised. Um, I, I did. Um, I did. But I had custody of my sister's youngest daughter when I was in my early 20s. Um, my sister was heavily on drugs. Uh, my sister passed away three years ago of fentanyl overdose, my older sister. So I had custody of a child. I raised a child. I did PTA meetings, birthday parties, doctor's visits. I couldn't just get up and go in my 20s like I was used to because I basically had a child. Christmases, birthdays, everything. I had to um, finance. It was a lot. So me having that experience of raising a child really gave me a, a reality check that that shit is mm. no joke. Mm. They're expensive. Um, you got to do homework. There's a lot. Of, it's it's twenty four seven job, and I commend all the parents, especially single parents out here that are raising children. That is a, the hardest job on the planet. Um, so. I have had opportunities. I've been engaged four times. Um, that'll all be in my book, too. Um, I've had opportunities to have children. And looking back, honestly, I'm like, thank God I never got pregnant by that fucking guy. What a loser. Like, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty. Serious. Because you look at where they're at now, and it's like, what the fuck? That could have been me. And so, you know, some people want to make fun of women that are older and single. Like, there's something wrong with us? No, absolutely not. There's no law written that says you have to have children and get married. That's a personal <clears throat> preference. <clears throat> I, at this point, do not want children. And I'm, I'm good. And everybody's like, oh, what about your legacy? What fucking legacy? <laughs> like, fuck out of here. Like, it is what it is. I feel you. I wish I could do it over. Yeah, I like to get up and go when I want. I like to spend my money how I want to spend it on myself. And I feel like a child would would stop all of that. So congratulations to everyone that has kids and loves being a parent. But that's not what I want to do. Mm. So. so what kind of what kind of what kind of wife is Chrissy? Like if the sex ain't good, is she still faithful? Because you said older guys, you've been with older guys for other reasons. And even in and that's and even in Islam, there's a reason you can be married for money and stuff like that. So what about the sexual department? Do you still got to get yours on the side? Definitely. I just I just make it clear that we're not in a committed relationship. Oh, all right, all right. And if they so don't like different. it, they don't have to deal with me. And nine times out of ten, they accept it and deal with me regardless, because it's just as it's just as much of a trade off for them to walk into a restaurant with me on their arm to their 75 year old friends, because to them, 
I'm a spring chicken. Even though to a 20 year old, I'm an old has been washed up bitch. But to a 75 year old gentleman, I'm still young and gorgeous. So <laughs> it works. Well, you're way. very, I want to say you're not washed up, but you're very gorgeous. And that's, <laughs> that's not, that's, that's, that's very easy to see. So Thank all you. the time you're beautiful. So I would never say that. So I don't know. I hope I didn't give you that impression. I was just trying to say that, you know, the experience with young women, and I was trying to bring it up to the to the domestic abuse and all that stuff and the programs and all that. But you wouldn't let me get there. You wouldn't let me get there. There was never no insult. Huh? So go ahead. Next question, please. <laughs> by the way, everyone you watching, I'm wearing... The lip gloss today I'm wearing is by Serving Looks in Candy. This is Candy. It looks a little different on the website. I had a few people in my DMs asking me. So me why did colors. you leave Love & Hip Hop? I'm sorry, what was the question? Why did you leave Love & Hip Hop? So people because are asking, I, so I got to ask. Chink and I broke up. He never got the divorce from his wife um, that he promised. And I had already wasted two years of my life with a married man. That's the reality no shame in my game um but he kept promising me that he was going to divorce her he didn't so why waste another year you did you really I mean? love him did you really really love him i loved him but i can't say i was in love with him um i guess i kind of settled you know he was from dc i'm from baltimore we were five days apart he's also a virgo we had a lot in common um and he was very charming and fun what he wanted to be but he had a lot of baggage. And actually, after the show, the season we were on, an 18-year-old uh, son that turned out to be his popped up, or 17-year-old, came out of the woodwork. He had a few kids already. You know, it was just a lot of baggage. And um, his family was always trying to put me down and compare me to his ex-wife or wife or whatever. I don't know where he's at or if he's still married to the chick. That was five years ago. But... Um, you know, I don't need to be put in, in fucking under a microscope by nobody's family and judged. You're not in the relationship with me. He was. The family's not. I'm not dating your father or your brother. I but, feel you. I feel and especially me being Caucasian um, and his family being African-American. It was I was always, you know, the, the Becky. They would laugh and call me Becky, white bitch, uh, 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 whatever. My skin is thick. But it's just like, really, like, you know, I got to hear how beautiful his light-skinned wife was. And, you know, it was always a put-down because I'm white. Um, I would like to see this woman. I, I, she's I more like beautiful to see her. than you are. Trust me. <laughs> the producers tried to find her everything. Nobody could find her. Nobody. I'm telling you. Mm -mm. I would love to And you're not black at all. I'm sorry? You're not black at all. You know, because no. you're very black. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, way, I grew I grew up in Baltimore, which is a predominantly African American city. So I don't know if that accounts to. Um, I mean, that. even your, your your whole look. I mean, you know, so it's it's crazy to see that you're not part black or like half black or anything. I'm surprised to hear that. I was very, I, actually I just really learned that that you are not black at all. I was very surprised. Very it, surprised. it doesn't matter. Um, no, I'm not black. Um, I don't claim to be black. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me if I'm black. No, I'm not black. Um, I know I know. there's a lot of uh, white people that try to act black. Um, that's their identity crisis. And just like there's black people that try to act white. I mean, it, it is what it is. That's their personality. But I'm just me. I'm just me. What, what about serving looks? How'd you, how'd you get into that? What made you start serving looks? And well, what came? how'd you come up with the name? All of that. Well, um, when I was in the hospital, like I said, I wanted to start my online business. Now, when I was on Love & Hip Hop, I had a manager, which was a big mistake. You know, a lot of people always are asking me, Chrissy, um, do you manage people? I used to have a modeling agency, and I used to do model management. But with Instagram and social media blowing up, Agencies and agents kind of became obsolete because now the potential client that wants to hire a model can just go directly on her page and skip the middleman, which is the agent. Uh, the agent. Um, <clears throat> the serving looks. Oh, so like I said, I was in the hospital and I, I had, okay, so when I was on TV, which, you know, they say strike when the iron is hot. I wanted to start selling merchandise when I was on TV. 
Now, my manager, who don't know shit, which I thought I needed her at the time, because like I said earlier, I was new to this whole entertainment business on this level. She had worked for Herb Gotti, and she had already had years and years in the, the record industry and the entertainment business. And she was very good at what she did professionally as far as emailing and handling my business, um, business side of things. But when I told her, I'm, you know, I'm ready to write a book, I'm ready to start selling products, she's like, no, let's just wait next year, next year. I said, no, why, why are we waiting? It's just not the right time. I, I I was stupid to even listen to her, but I was so busy doing appearances, um, promotions, press. Um, you know, I put it on the back burner. And like I said, then I got caught up with the abusive relationship. I got caught up with um, being in the plastic surgery business. Um, you know, there was a lot going on. So like I said, everything was put on the back burner. So serving looks was born in November when I got out of the hospital because this is something I wanted to do when I was on Love & Hip Hop. But I was discouraged by someone I trusted at the time. We no longer speak. Um, for everyone who thinks they need a manager, no, you do not need a manager, okay? Because not everybody's gonna have the best interest at heart like yourself, okay? So Serving Looks, I started in November. I just hit the ground running. Serving Looks is a name um, that me and my bestie, Khalil Martin, are always saying like, oh, Serving Looks. Look at you today serving the Versace Looks. Yeah, serving, shutting it down. So, you know, it's about walking into the room, being confident, serving the fucking looks. All eyes on me. Hello. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So, so that's just um, a lot of people who have followed me for years and know the real Chrissy, not just what they read on Google, know that already. Because I'm always saying serving looks, yes, and all that. Thank you. So, um, so let me ask you. So you said you was in surgery business. Mm -hmm. Damn, did you get it? Did Dr. Bill did you, and you was on, and they still use your face, they still use your promotion. Is that part of your contract? They still use you. Who does the the the, the surgery, the place you was working at? They Which still place? use Let me Dr. Find Bill. Out. They still use your right likeness, now. Dr. Bill. Who, Dr. Bill, Dr. Bill Aiden, Dr. Aiden. I'm not on yeah. Dr. Aiden's page. Yeah, you was. Yes, you are. I'm on that right now. Hold on. Yeah, you on that. I'm going to go look right now. We, we had him look you up. We looked it up. You're still on there. So I was, I was wondering. And I know that you was with a different office. I so I was wondering what few. happened. Yeah, no, Dr. Aiden was actually the best doctor that I worked um, for. He's currently on Housewives of New, uh, New Jersey with his wife, New Jennifer Jersey. Aiden, who is awesome. Like, she is so cool. I heard you one of them. Um, you're a fan of... Um, Love after locked up, right? Okay. So obviously I've been locked up, and I also had love after locked up. I didn't have disappointment after locked up. I didn't disappoint some after locked up. And why do you love that show so much? Because it's very real. Um, you watch a lot of shows, you can tell they're staged. Um, but this show is very real. Um, I mean, they've smoked crack on the show. Um, they blurred it out, of course. Um, it's some real shit that actually. <laughs> You know, coming from a dysfunctional family of addicts that I could relate to a lot. Um, my sister was, you know, always incarcerated. My nieces were in and out of jail. My mother was in and out of jail. So, you know, I, I know how that life is of getting out and kind of um, repeating your bad habits that ended mm -hmm. up getting you there in the first place. So part of me really connects with it because it's the familiarity of it. But then, of course, it's entertaining because the fucking, they can't make this shit up, a lot of them. I mean, the shit is just, some of the, the one guy gave, the one girl, Lizzie, in season one got $900,000 out of guys the, her, mm. her, when she did her bid off these mm. prison inmate websites. And she was telling them, send me money, baby, so I can get home quicker to you and pay this lawyer. But she was, she was feeding her drug habit. Mm. So that's very real. But she, she was very real with it. Um. But it's real stories. But honestly, you I ever like trooped a bid before? I'm sorry. You ever trooped a bid before? You ever, you ever trooped a bid? Um, I'm not going to answer that question. So, um, my, my, right. my <laughs> you're funny. So, 
<laughs> you, you just keep fucking trying me. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's what I'm here to do, baby. No, it really shouldn't be. You shouldn't Why have not? to be trying your guests. Okay. I'm trying you by asking you ever troop the bed with a guy. Listen, that's will all be in my book. Twenty four ninety five. I know. I'm going to read your book. Available on Amazon Prime this fall. Thank you. And I'm gonna get it. Well, that's cool. I don't mind waiting to see it. I don't mind waiting to read it. But well, you have such an interesting life. You know, it reminds me of a book um that I read before. Um, Let that be the reason. You ever read that book? No. You should, man. I think that person was out of Baltimore too, man. It's a good book, man. It's about a girl coming up. She got part one and two. But, um, um, I can say um, to somewhat answer your question, I have dated men who who were incarcerated. And what really kills me is the, the, the prison talk before they get out, the letters, the promises of marriage. And oh my God, I love you so much. I've had the time to think while I'm in here, baby. I'm so sorry that I cheated on you. It's all true. At the moment. But once well, that ass gets outside, a week later, they right back to the cheating, no good motherfucker they were before they went in. I mean, we At all... At least in my not, positions. Not, Everyone I dated, that shit mm, went out the fucking window. <laughs> all that jail talk, please. This is the most entertaining interview I ever had. And this is the greatest thing that ever happened. You cursed me out online. So it was really a good experience. And you weren't taking no for this fucking interview, man. This man has hounded me for months to do this fucking interview. I'm this like, all true. right, fucking this I'll is do true. the interview. Jesus Christ. Oh, you were yeah, tight. This is true. You were tight when I put up them two other interviews. You oh forget you then. Ah, oh, see what it is. <laughs> like a child. <laughs> So is that why is that why you started with me when you came on here? No, you came on here with that pleasant. negative energy. I was very pleasant, and it was expecting to to be speaking to the nice gentleman that I met at the pop up shop. Instead, mm -hmm. I got statements thrown at me. <sighs> You're good at this. So, so did you ever have a, you never had a butt job or none of that? Had a what? Have you ever had a butt job? None of that? A butt job. What I've just called booty job. You mean a buttock enhancement? Here we go with this That's shit. That's your yeah, proper exactly terminology. I mean. You mean a BBL. Yeah. Do you know what a BBL means? Hell no. Brazilian butt lift. That is the proper terminology for a fat transfer, okay? Mm. When you take the fat out of your stomach and transfer it to your butt or hips. You can even do it to your boobs, wherever you choose. It's your fat to do. So let me let me educate the viewers and yourself. It's not called a butt job, okay? Mm. It's a fat transfer, a Brazilian mm. butt lift, and it's not fake because you're using your own body fat. You're just moving it. It's like moving your money from checkings to savings, okay? It's still mm. your money. So mm. it's not a butt job. It's a BBL, and it is the number one procedure most popular in the world right now, but it's also the most dangerous and deadliest procedure. Another reason why I left the business. Because when you're working for these doctors, promoting them, you're basically putting your name and stamping that they're a good doctor. What if somebody gets an infection? What if somebody dies on the table? Then who are they coming back for? Oh, yeah, I saw him on your page, Chrissy. I, I got out of that whole business. I'm not literally putting my name on somebody else's hands when... They could have been out sniffing coke the whole night before to stay up to do surgeries, six surgeries. Mm. Day. Have you seen that before? I've seen it. Yes, I have. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, I really want to start doing a docu-series on the plastic surgery business because a lot of people are getting cheated out of their money. Um, I've met surgeons. They want nothing to do with their patients once they get them off the table. They, they become lipo mills. They don't even want to do a follow-up appointment. This woman just spent ten, maybe fifteen thousand, and you're treating her like a piece of shit. You're ignoring their calls. This is way too common, and I don't like it. And this needs to be exposed. A lot of people have been through this. So to answer your question, have I ever had a butt job? Um, my butt has always been nice and firm and nice. I'm gonna show you. Actually, I have a picture here when I used to show me. Oh, work at, when I used to work at Sue's Rendezvous. 
okay, 2003, no shame in my game, mm -hmm. okay, so I always had ass, okay, but as I got older, over 40, my ass started getting flatter and wider, I had more hips than ass, right, so hips are good. this is how I got into the plastic surgery business, a, a doctor's office in Brooklyn offered me a free BBL fat transfer in exchange for promotion. I'm like, wow, this, this is really, you want to give me this $8,000 surgery for free? Just to post? Where can I sign up? Cause I hate my fat stomach. You fucking right. So I did the surgery. Um, and didn't realize I should have asked questions. I didn't realize what could have happened to me. I just dove head on because it was a free surgery. Um, thank God it came out great. I didn't, I didn't transfer that much fat. I actually went live during the procedure. Um, because like I said, I already had ass, but we just put a little bit where it got a little flat just to give it some volume. Um, but I went into it blindly like a fool. Um, but you know, I ended up working for this place because for me going live and promoting them, they got so much business. Um, the value of me posting outweighed the service that they gave me. I said, give me a job, teach me the business. I need a job. Mm. So I started as a patient care coordinator. I'm not going to say the name of this place because this place is hell, a hell hole. Now they started me out at $25 an hour and I learned the business. I became top closer. I sold over $3.6 million my first year in, in surgeries. So other doctors offices were seeking me out. Come work for me. I'll give you this. I'll pay you more. So um, that's how I ended up working with different doctors until I started my own company. But then I, I learned that the first doctor um, that did my, my surgery was a pediatrician. He wasn't mm. even a plastic surgeon or a cosmetic surgeon at, at mm. best. Nothing. Uh, is learned, that normal? I learned that in order to do liposuction, this is the law. You just have to be an MD. You can be any kind of doctor to perform liposuction. It's the most dumbest law um, that's ever been created because that means you could go and be a podiatrist, a foot doctor, and go do lipo if you wanted to do fucking lipo. That, you weren't trained in using the cannula. You weren't trained in sculpting a woman's body. But these doctors are so fucking greedy. They're going to work. They're going now and working in Miami, New York, uh, everywhere for these, these lipo mill um, clinics and they're letting, you know, other doctors just show them how to do it. They didn't get proper training. So it, it's a lot of you know, horrors. I've seen some yeah. horrible things that I just couldn't condone. And um, I still have one doctor stalking me, threatening me. Um, he's been in the New York Post twice for sexual harassing two of his workers. Mm. I mean, it goes on and on. So that whole business makes me sick now. I used to love it because I loved helping people to look and feel their best. But then once I saw the shady dark side and the greed, I couldn't have done it. And it's sad for the, the people out here who are genuinely looking for that beautiful transformation um, and they're getting robbed of their money or potentially hurt or infected or, or potentially could get killed. And a lot of these clinics, Hide. They, they have people die on the table and they hide it and pay off the family so the family don't bring it to the public and hurt their business. Oh, it's scandal. Full fucking scandal. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. So. so let me ask you something. So looking back on life, how do you see yourself today? Being that we're coming to the end of this. How do you see your life? How do you see yourself? As how do you success. see your journey? I'm a success. I'm happy. I'm accomplished. Um living my best life and i have a long way to go god willing um i'm proud of myself i'm the most successful person in my whole family i broke the generational curses um i've set an example for you know for other people that have grown up in dysfunctional homes that despite your circumstances against all odds you can still get to where the fuck you want to be if you tune all that bullshit out it took me moving three states away and getting away from a lot of the negativity uh, from the, my family to really focus on me. But I made it happen. Do you recommend that for people that need to get away, start over, to get on their journey, to move away from the people they love? Because sometimes people don't know how to do that. 
Um, it depends away from on what they want to do. For me, it was a no-brainer because all the modeling and acting work was right here, three-hour drive away. That's why I didn't go to L.A. L.A. was far, far. You know what I'm saying? I could still drive down to Baltimore and see my father and stuff if I wanted to. But um, it depends on what you want to do. You don't got to necessarily move. But, I mean, when you have addicts in your family, they're always begging you, knocking on your door, some sob story, please. My sister used to rob my purse and jump out of the car, like when we would pull up at 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. Shit like that. Yeah, I moved the fuck away. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. the fuck away from all that insanity. Um, some people's situations aren't that extreme. And everybody's not built to really just move. I knew two people when I moved here and started over. And, mm -hmm. you know, but that's just in me. I'm, I'm strong like that. Not everybody has that in them. And that's okay. You don't have to geographically change your location to change your life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, and a relationship. Are you submissive or are you, you know, you got to have to be the boss? Okay, I'm going to ask you this. But what do you think, mister? <laughs> Judging said. off of talking to me. Well, right now, it looks like, you know, for me, I mean, I'm an outsider. You, mean, like, wanna have, you might want to be in control of things a little bit. I mean, you've been a manager. You've been in control.